Believe it or not, everyone that builds PCs is not always using a dedicated GPU. And for those users, there's typically not a ton of great options for cases, or at least not in the premium section. Well, thankfully, NFC Systems has come out with their new S4T, which looks to change that. This is the NFC Systems S4T, or Skyreach 4 Tiny. Tiny because it is smaller than, obviously, their Skyreach 4 Mini and some of the other cases that they have in the lineup. At 3.3 liters, it's the most compact case currently that NFC Systems offers, and it has the same visual style, aluminum build, and solid construction that you get from the larger cases. Overall, it looks very nice. You can see you have the same sky slots there on the top and bottom, and also on the side panels. The front of the case is very simple, just a simple cutout for your power button, and the back is also simple, a simple cutout for your I.O., and also two slots for power connectors. So not a ton going on from the exterior, but it does look premium as always with all of their cases, and it feels premium. The finish is very, very nice. Getting into the case is pretty easy. There are four screws on each side for both the top and bottom panel, and then there are some screws on the corners of both the front and rear plates there if you wanna get those off as well. So once you get these screws off the top and bottom panels, they slide off really easily, like so, and they're rock solid like you would typically expect from any NFC systems case. Internally, the layout looks pretty simple up front, but it gets a little more complex. There's a lot of flexibility here. So the bay here, you see a nice big bay that can accommodate STX motherboards and or ITX motherboards, which a lot of you will probably be building with. But you'll notice this bracket here, and this is where things get interesting. This multi-bracket allows you to connect a wide range of H2 Plex power supplies. You can get pretty flexible in terms of configurations and how you want to spec out this case from a power supply standpoint. At first glance, the S4T looks like just a compact version of the S4 Mini, but that's actually not the case. In its base configuration, yes, it's a very simple layout that can take CPUs with integrated graphics, and that's really almost the end of the story there. But with some of the expansion units, you can get a little bit crazy in terms of configurations and compatibility. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice that can be modified is this multi-bracket here. Simply turn the case over and you'll see two screw spots that you just unscrew there. And this bracket can be removed or repositioned really easily. You'll notice there are other matching hole patterns in the front and the rear, so you can move your HD Plex power supply or whatever power supply you wanna use up or back. You can also put fans on there if you wanted to as well. It's a very flexible piece, or you can just remove it outright if you don't need it. And there's a little more information, obviously, on the videos on the NFC Systems channel, but without it, it's a nice, clean, open bay, um, really nothing in there, but it goes a step further. This case is hyper-modular, so the front panels can come off, obviously, four screws on each. The back panel can come off as well, as I mentioned earlier, four screws there as well. But this case is actually expandable in a way that you probably were not anticipating. So there is a add-on unit, so you can get this add-on piece here. That's sold obviously separately, but it allows you to either put the case side by side and create one larger case similar to a standard S4 Mini and or stack them like so and you can create a stacked case where you can now put a, a graphics card in here and additional power. You can separate the power bricks internally. There are other front and rear plates. So here's an example of the add-on rear plate if you wanted to do a GPU. So we've got a power plug option there and also obviously a dual slot GPU and that would slide or, or be mounted on the back plate there like so. So it's incredibly flexible. There are also included side pieces here. So you would take your case, say you were gonna stack it like so, you would add the additional side piece, and then there is a joiner piece that goes like so, and then you add your top and bottom patch plate. So it's pretty easy actually to do so, and I will definitely, definitely be doing a build with some of these add-on pieces in the future. But for today, I'm just gonna go with a standard build. You can also get additional front plates. So let me go show you like that. So they sent over this piece here, which is a wood front plate, which I think looks really nice. 
Um, there's also obviously going to be standard aluminum. Josh is always really good with creating unique um, different things that people actually want. So I think there's going to be probably a ton of great options, but most of you would probably just opt for a standard front aluminum plate that was just a little bit bigger, but just know that there are cool options coming um, in the pipeline. So super, super flexible. Um, one last thing on flexibility, there are also, he did send over these guys too. So this is a, I guess you would say a carbon fiber stand um, that mounts on the bottom side of the case and then sits in these two, uh, with these two feet here, it kind of stacks like that. So it gives you kind of a carbon fiber look there, which I think is really cool and lets you have a, the case in the vertical configuration. So it can look like a mini console on your desk or, um, or your entertainment center. So there's a lot of great options. They always do an amazing job with accessories and customizability and this case is no exception. This might be the most customizable case yet. You can really go crazy with the configurations. Technically, you could probably mount multiple stacks on top of this if you really wanted to, uh, which is a really unique option and I'm really excited to test all this out. Size-wise, obviously the S4T is an ultra compact case. It's very similar in size to the JHack Pure MK2, another ultra compact case. This is longer front to back. This is wider for sure. If you flip them around the same side, you can see they're almost identical in size. And compared to the older, the original S4 Mini Classic, you can see that it's significantly smaller overall. So it's a very compact case. Pretty much any standard case is gonna be bigger than this, uh, but it does have a decent amount of room for the stuff you wanna put in. For parts, I'm going with the Gigabyte X570i TX motherboard, a nice motherboard there. For the CPU, the brain, I have the new Ryzen 5700G the APU. This should be really perfect for the system with a nice eight core processor. I have my G-Unique power supply here. This is up to 400 watts-ish in that area. I would say if you're gonna build in this system, go with an HD Plex unit. It's built for those, but these are fine as well. Also, Pico PSUs would be fine as well. I've got 16 gigs of 3200 RAM there, uh, 970 EVO 500 gig, and my power button here that will connect right up. So a pretty simple build. This shouldn't take any time at all. Let's get started. So here we have the system fully assembled. It only took about five to 10 minutes because you literally just plop in the motherboard, connect up your power and you're good to go. The space in the front, the added space in the front here has made it a lot easier to route cables. Obviously I'm going to give them some zip ties and tie them up to make them look really neat. Uh, an HD Plex unit would fit in there perfectly and since that's what the case is designed for, that's why you see the extra space here. I may use the bracket to add fans to the front 
for this configuration with the G-Unique power supply because I could have a few fans either doing an exhaust or pumping some cool air back into that motherboard bay there, but otherwise I think it'll be fine. This should cool itself with no problems with this system. So let's put the top panel and bottom panel on and turn it on, see how it performs. When it came to temperatures, I was admittedly a little bit concerned running an eight core, 16 thread CPU with integrated graphics inside a compact case like this with a Noctua NHL9A, which is a decent compact cooler, but certainly not the best. There are for sure better coolers I could have fit into this case, but overall the temps were really, really good. I was very pleasantly surprised. So at around idle, we're hitting 33 degrees. It's just solid. That's where it flat lines. Even after extensive loads, it will come down to that 33C mark and it just sits there and hovers, which is fantastic. Even during light browsing, you know, watching YouTube videos, watching uh, onboard videos, stuff like that, around 54 degrees C, which is, which is obviously manageable. And then when we touch into gaming, we were in the 74 degree C range, which is again, really good for a CPU with integrated graphics. That's pretty fantastic. And also with 100% load, just burning the CPU, we saw it touched that 91C mark. So obviously you can overpower this sort of cooler if you go super crazy, but even at 91C, it's not like it was throttling or anything and that was peak temperature. So you could run a CPU pretty much to its max capabilities inside this case with this configuration. If you go with a better cooler, you'll see even better results. There are some um, for sure that you could pick up in that ITX form factor. Noise levels are also something that I'm typically concerned about in these compact cases. Since in a system like this, you really only have one fan that's pushing air into your CPU, but there is a ton of ventilation all over this case, so it should be able to handle the noise levels pretty well, and thankfully, it did just that. I found that noise levels at idle were excellent, super quiet, and they only needed to ramp up when I did that 100% load test. Otherwise, the system remained essentially silent. So let's take a listen at idle, and then we'll take a listen at gaming and also 100% load. So after building in the S4T and testing it out, I really do like the case. You just have to make sure it lines up with how you want to use your computer. I think that this is perfect for people who are looking for a portable rig that has a decent amount of computational power and maybe play light games. Like if you play League of Legends or MOBAs or really light titles like Overwatch or something like that, this will be perfectly fine for you. You can play most titles at 1080p 60, most light titles. And if you really wanna play some heavier games, 1280 by 720 at medium settings or low settings, you can make that work as well. Or if you just want the most premium, the best looking ultra compact case for an integrated graphics CPU, this would definitely be the best option as well. There's also gonna be a section of people who look at this and say, hey, I have a 5700G or 5600G or one of the older Ryzen APUs, something like that, and I'm planning on upgrading in the future. You could definitely get the base model here, have this nice premium case, and then later on upgrade it, you know, expand it, add a compact GPU as well. That's something that you could consider doing um, in the future as well. So there's a lot of flexibility there. It's not just like a one and done option. I'd say if you're only planning on going with just no graphics, you want to use just integrated graphics, then some of the cases from JHack are also a good option. They're a little more plain, obviously. They don't look quite as good and the build quality is a little bit different. I don't want to say worse, but obviously the NFC systems case is more unique. It's, it's more of a piece of art, a statement on your desk, and obviously it's more flexible. So do you want the premium option or do you want just a more generic case? There are obviously a ton of generic offerings for you there, but I really do think the S4T stands out in its design, its flexibility, and obviously its enhanced functionality with some of those add-on units, uh, the, you know, the stand, all that fun stuff, the under desk mount, there's a whole bunch of options and hopefully more coming in the future. 
For more information on some of the many configuration options that you can have for this case, I will link to a few of the videos on the Not From Concentrate channel that focus entirely on the layouts, you know, especially if you're looking to get one of the HG Plex power supplies. They did a good job, Josh did, going over some of those options there, much better and much longer, obviously, than this video here. So I would definitely recommend checking those out. I'll also put links to everything you saw here part-wise in the description in case you wanna pick up anything for yourself. And as always, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you like the video. I'm Jay. I'll see you next time.